talk here and the title of my project is making sense of Calgary's criminal activity an analytical approach my analysis involved five CSV files uh, which were all edited cleaned and eventually joined in Tableau prep most of these analysis were downloaded from the data.calgary.ca and owned by the city of Calgary the primary data set I used was the community crime and disorder statistics um, it had 115,000 rows and 11 columns of data. Uh, things included in this data set were things such as uh, community type, uh, crime type, being a crime or a disorder, where crimes are things such as theft, break and enter, robbery, disorders being things such as prostitution, disturbances, neighbor disputes, uh, gunshots. Um, number of crimes, obviously, uh, or number of disorders, resident count, and date. Uh, I used four subsequent data sets to kind of just uh, assist me in my visualizations and further analysis. They were the community district boundaries one, uh, police service one, uh, monthly economic indicators, uh, civic census, and household information. I'm going to jump into my analysis, which I found the most interesting. And uh, the question that comes to mind is the what is the overall trend in total criminal activity for the city of Calgary between 2012 and 2019? So when I go into this and I plotted um, total crime count, for the most part, you can kind of see this upward trending um, uh, line. And it kind of mirrors the, the population of Calgary pretty closely. Um, however, there is this one sort of step change here we see in 2014 and having lived in Calgary since 2011 and having worked in the energy industry, I think I know why. Uh, 2014 marked the year of a pretty deep recession uh, in the energy industry. So I decided to use some economic indicators to see if I can uh, coincide this step change with maybe changes in, in some of these economic indicators. And the ones I chose to, to look at uh, specific to Calgary were housing starts and unemployment rate and actually, if, if you take a closer look here at the, at the year 2014, we can, we can see that housing starts, um, they start to tank in 2014, um, and the unemployment rate starts to increase as well, signaling that we are in fact entering a recession. So um, I guess the bigger question is, why does crime go up during a recession? So um, as we all know, unemployment rates go up, people are being laid off. Um, Having been through layoffs myself, I can speak to the uh, mental toll it takes on a person's health, not just the financial stress. So I would expect that increase in social disorders is, is met with uh, a recession. So when I replotted everything and broke up my criminal activity uh, into disorders and types, you can see that the social disorders actually do tend to show um, or mimic this step change here um, and account for the larger uh, portion of changes in total criminal activity during this time. The other results in my analysis I found interesting uh, ties back to the question uh, number five here. Does having a police headquarters or station near a community seem to have any effect on the crime rates in within or around that community? Um, so what I did here was after identifying my most dangerous and safest communities uh, in Calgary based on uh, average crime per capita, I created a subset of these communities um, with the 10 safest and 10 most dangerous. I included the police stations uh, on the same base maps as the two subset communities. I was fully expecting to observe that the safer communities were the ones uh, in closer proximity to the police stations, but I found the opposite, opposite to be true. The most dangerous communities tended to be the clustered around the police stations. I guess in retrospect, it kind of makes sense to me now. Locations of police stations are likely chosen based on many factors, but one of those factors likely being proximity of an area or a community within a city that has higher than average criminal activity. And that is my presentation. Thank you.